The Song of the Pretty Bird was a poem first performed in 2016 by the poet Shay Lexi Stewart when she was only 20 years old. And it's one of my personal favorite feminist poems um, and poems in general. And it was actually first exposed to be by my friend who saw it on TikTok, um, which I think is where it gained a lot of its momentum. And essentially, the poem is another extended metaphor poem, but this time the speaker compares her experience as a woman to the experience of a caged bird. So the speaker opens with describing how people will simultaneously admire and yet also ridicule her for her attention to her appearance. Um, and immediately the speaker starts off with talking about how despite people's criticisms of her, she can always get away with any flaws or any mistakes because of her beauty. Um, and she in fact even does this willingly and she repeats this phrase again, look at my long clean coat. Um, and right off the bat and continued throughout the poem, her diction and repetition of the word pretty and the words pretty bird reflect how she herself is like a trained bird. And she repeat, repeats the same phrase and these same sentences over and over again in a really aggressive way, almost like it's been drilled into her. Um, and I think this is really aided by the spoken word form because not only is she audibly repeating this word pretty bird, pretty bird, pretty bird, but she's visually mimicking the movements of an actual bird. And I think that the spoken word format also allows the way she says things and her tone and her movement to become a part of the poetry medium. Um, and continuously her movement physically will mimic the form of the poetry. And continuing, she also uses di diction well when she gets stuck in a loop. There's a line she says, um, to pretty poke bird fun, to pretty poke fun bird, to pretty bird bird, pretty bird bird, pretty pretty pretty. And so she gets stuck in this repetition um, and she gets stuck in a loop and it's like when she messes up, when she's shaken, when she makes a mistake, she reverts back inwards to this trained version of herself, just repeating the same sentence over and over again, kind of jumping back into the one thing she knows. Um, and the poem is riddled with slant rhymes, with repetition, with alliteration, and they give it this really driving and forceful feel. Um, and she also uses a lot of clever word tricks, like the double meaning of pretty. She calls herself a pretty bird. Um, she uses pretty as a verb as well later in the poem, and she also uses the phrase, I'm pretty sure, to show that uncertainty of what it feels like to be a woman and not have that courage of your conviction and I think that that double meaning is really aided again by spoken word form because even the way she says it can influence the meaning of the word and so by the end of the first stanza she's already starting to question her role as a pretty bird she asks they will spend equal time begging to share bed with me condemning mediocrity how does one achieve complexity when all she was ever taught to be was basic Pigeon man wants pretty bird to pretty bird until pretty bird fulfills ideas of prettiness. Then she's too pretty, pretty bird, bird, paralyzing and preened. Um, and these realizations are happening to her as she's talking, but they don't stay with her very long because immediately in the next stanza, she jumps right back into her repeated chorus, look at my long, clean coat. And then she doubles down this time saying, take a picture, I beg you. And she knows that her worth lies in her beauty and she falls deeper and deeper into a realization and she continues, my left side is my best side. I have a best side. I have a better half. I am a half. And when she says this, it's chilling because it feels like you're going on this discovery with her. And her voice is both powerful and forceful and she seems both indignant indignant but also sad and surprised that she's let herself become reduced to a half and throughout the poem you can see really intense dynamics as physically she gets bigger showing her ambition and her voice but then the next line her body will on stage get physically smaller and in the poetry verse you can see the lines get smaller as she physically gets smaller reflecting how women are taught to take up less space. And then the next stanza, 
She uses really short lines and short diction. Pretty sure, pretty sure, maybe not. Sorry, 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 sorry. Can I ask a question? Sorry, sorry, may I, may I? And this again shows how women are taught to shut themselves up, to take up less space. And you can see it both visually and in the form of the poetry. And nearing the end, she makes an allusion to what she calls baby bird, who she defines as the pretty bird before pretty bird learned to pretty. And she says that baby bird used to sing. And again, she builds, she gets louder with her body, with her voice, with the forms and the lines. And then she gets shut down again. And so she says, so she shrank learned to make herself small enough to nearly fit back in her eggshell, to tiptoe atop eggshells. This bridge in the poem is really powerful because I think it shows the progression, or rather regression, that misogyny forces onto women, forcing them to get smaller. And additionally, I think it's really interesting that she brings a reference to herself as a child and wanting to fit back into her eggshell because it shows the mirrored beauty standards that enforce childlike views of idealistic women's bodies, like thin bodies, hairless, and limited sexual experience, and that, in a sense, is a virtue for a poem about beauty standards. I think that's really interesting to throw in there. But despite all of her efforts, she continues saying, but still she sang too loud, so they caged her up for her pretty, pretty bird bird long clean coat for her pretty, pretty bird, pretty pink legs. And they said, sing, pretty lady, sing, but I forgot how. And this moment in the poem for me was the most heart-wrenching by far because they had caged her up and essentially stopped her from asserting her own opinions, from being intellectually stimulating, from taking opportunities, and instead turned her into a vessel that only exists for beauty. But then they criticize her for not having opinions. They criticize her for being shallow, for lacking depth when they've robbed the depth from her. And in the very last line, she says, they were bored of me. Like they had squeezed everything out of her that they possibly could and now they saw nothing left in her, which again mirrors what she said earlier about baby birds' value and how women lose their value over time because if your value is inherently linked to your beauty, that will fade with age. And people often criticize older women because they're losing their sexual desirability. And overall, this poem is really powerful for me personally because it shows how misogyny affects personhood and lived experience. And I think in that way, poetry captures human experience so well. And that experience is crucial to feminist theory. And I think this also really well captures the wave because it shows the movement away from earlier forms of feminism. That it's not just talking about equality, it's not just talking about the concrete ideas and getting women jobs, but it really dives into more nuanced perspectives. Rape culture, hypersexualization of women, feminine self-expression, and microaggressions. Um, and I think another really significant point of it being spoken word poetry is that it was shared on YouTube and recorded and people can watch this video and then it was shared on social media and that's how I found it. And that's really important because social media has been crucial to the spread of fourth wave feminism and really changed the scope of it entirely. And overall, I think that the Song of the Pretty Bird is a fantastic feminist poet poem and life poem and truly captures where I think feminism is going.